So if you're just getting started, I would spend all of my time with ChatGPT directly because it's the easiest sort of onboarding point to this. But I've got some very sort of very important warnings. Um, basically, the problem with these systems is that it's incredibly easy to form first impressions very quickly. And so how you interact with them and your sort of first goes, if you don't bear this in mind, you might very quickly form an opinion that's, you might, you might say, wow, this thing is omnipotent and it knows everything about everything and then get into sort of science fiction land. Or you might ask it a dumb question and it gives you a dumb answer and you're like, wow, this thing's stupid. This is clearly a waste right. of time. Both of those things are true. This thing is incredibly stupid. It's also capable of amazing things. And so the trick is to really experiment, like go in there with a very methodical sort of scientific mind on this and say, okay, let's keep on trying it. If it gives me a stupid answer, try tweaking that prompt or maybe sort of add to your list of things that it can't, like asking it about logic problems and maths. Normally it's terrible. Like GPT 3.5 can't do mathematical stuff at all. Four is a lot better, which is interesting, um, but you've probably got access to three. So don't, you know, ask it a simple math puzzle and it gets it wrong. You're like, wow, this is a waste of time. It's a computer that can't even do maths. You've got to understand the things that it can do. The way I like, I like thinking about it effectively as a calculator for words, right? It's a language model. Language is the stuff that it's best at. So if you ask it to extract the facts from this paragraph of text that I've pasted in, do summarization, um, come up with um, alternative titles for this blog entry, that kind of stuff. Those are good starting points. Something I love using it for is brainstorming and ideas, which is very unintuitive because everyone will tell you they can't have an original idea, right? These the systems, they just know what's in their training data. But the trick with ideas is always ask it for 40 at a time. So as an example, um, I threw in a thing the other day. I said, uh, give me ideas for, give me 40 ideas for data set plugins that I could build that incorporate AI. And when you do that, the first three or five will be obvious and dumb because I mean, obviously, right. But by number right. 35, like as you get to the end of that list, that's when stuff starts getting interesting. And then you can follow up and prompt and say, okay, now take inspiration from marine biology and give me plugin ideas about AI inspired by that world. And as you start sort of throwing in these weird extra inspirations, that's when the stuff gets good. So you can actually use this as a really effective tool for, and you know, brainstorming doesn't harm anything. You're not cheating on your homework if you ask a language model to, to come up with 40 bizarre ideas for things that you can do. But in amongst that 40, as you read through them, that's where those sort of sparks of creativity are gonna come from that help you come up with, with exciting new things that you can do. 